Okay, so here I have a traverse with just the interior angles uh, labeled and the course AB with an azimuth of, of 347, 45, 34. In this exercise, we'll calculate the azimuths of all the other courses going counterclockwise around the traverse here BC to CD to DE and E back to A. So in Excel, I've set up just some columns for the courses, um, some columns for the interior angles. I've already typed them in. We'll calculate the decimal degrees. I've typed in the azimuth for the first one that we already know, course AB. And each of these angles is at the vertex of the last letter in the course. So the vertex at B, the interior angle is 9651.13.03. To do a quick uh, arithmetic check, we can sum up these degrees, minutes, and seconds. You can see I have two minutes here, and that adds to 180 um, seconds. We have 120 seconds, which is two minutes, and that leads to three whole degrees, 180 minutes, three whole degrees added to that, that's 540. And that coincides with five sided polygons. The interior angles should add up to 540. Okay. To calculate the decimal degrees, just going to add these up minutes divided by 60 plus seconds divided by 3600. I'm also going to do the same for the azimuth, calculating the decimal degrees so we can do computation. The way we figure the azimuth of course BC would be to simply, because we're going around the course counterclockwise, we would take the back azimuth of AB, which would be the azimuth of BA, and add the interior angle of B. So I need to figure the back azimuth of the uh, course AB, which would simply be equal to the decimal degree minus 180. However, what I would really need to do is uh, do a little more, be a little more thorough by including an if statement <clears throat> to see if the um, decimal degrees here is greater than uh, 180 before I subtract 180 from it and if it is I'll go ahead and subtract 180 from it if it's not I'm gonna need to add 180 to it so that would be the back azimuth of uh, an azimuth that was either in the northeast or the southeast quadrant so now I can fill that down um, without so what I'm going to calculate here will um, automatically calculate the back azimuths already so I just need to take the back azimuth and add the decimal degree of the interior angle 'll we'll fill that down now here's a problem. I'm crossing at this point. I'm adding the back azimuth to um, <clears throat> a, a number that will cause it to be greater than uh, 360. So what I should do in here is add another little if statement to check if 
the sum of those is greater than 360, then I'll just take uh, the sum and subtract 360. No need for parentheses there. Otherwise, it's just the sum. At that point, I should get the true uh, azimuths. Now, to parse these out, um, it's easy enough, and I have another video that converts the azimuths and um, from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds, and also to bearings, uh, so that's fun as well. But we're just going to use a simple trunk function, and we're going to truncate that. And in the minutes, um, I could use the modulus function. Where I take that and divide it by 1 and take the modulus of it and multiply it by 60. And that would give me um, decimal minutes. However, I should probably trunk that as well. And that will give me my whole minutes. Now for seconds, uh, I could kind of repeat the process and get my decimal minutes back. So might as well just copy this interior part. And that will get me, again, decimal minutes. And if I take the modulus of, of that, and multiply it by 60. Oops. Oops. <laughs> then I can take the modulus uh, oh, yeah, times 60 and then multiply the end result by 60 as well and that will get me my decimal seconds. And there you have it. I have degrees, minutes, and seconds for the azimuths of all the interior, all the courses, knowing the interior angles and, and one azimuth.